Yes, welcome my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name. And at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows, every tongue confesses. Because Jesus Christ is indeed Lord. He's over it all. And in Him, we live, we move, we have our being. And we exist in this place, which we call time and space, which even that is going out the window at this point. We exist in this space at such a time as this for the good pleasure of the Lord that we serve, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the one that is over it all, and in Him we live, move, have our being. In Him we do have the victory over the circumstance, over the situation, over whatever it is that we face in this life. Because to him that overcomes, and God has given us that instruction, that is one thing that is consistent to every child of God that has been given as an instruction in Revelation 2 and in Revelation 3. Whether you see it as a series of different activities over time and space, Uh, for all the different churches, church ages, a type of each individual as a type of church. Um, Whatever it may be, everybody's given the same instruction to him who overcomes. And you and I have been given the instruction, and we overcome by remaining in him and his words remaining in us. We overcome by keeping our eyes on I am. And Jesus Christ is I am. We are one in him, and his words remain in us, and we bear much fruit, and that fruit does last. Now, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> here we are in the middle of a world that is coming unraveled, where nothing is stable, everything is is um, is 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 malleable at this point. Um, it's it's starting to come apart, um, and things are just shifting. Things that were one way and now something else. People that were one way are now something else. Um, Things that you thought were stable in reality now become something else. So as time and space is coming apart, and scriptures even discuss how men's hearts will fail them when they see the things that come upon the earth in this time. Well, now for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, when the waves of the sea start to foment and, and and just toss to and fro and the storms rage and all of that, we'll take a lesson from Peter. Keep your eyes on Christ because if you look at all the stuff going on around you, you're going to start to sink. If you take your eyes off of Christ, you're going to start to go down and you're going to start um, sinking with everybody else that looks at the external circumstance and the external situation because it, it is going to become and be so difficult and so terrible. And so, um, and there's not going to make any sense. Now, part of what God is doing in all of this <clears throat> is to upend the satanic system that has been in place. And we know about this in, in Daniel. We know about this in the book of Revelation. I mean, that when God destroys that system, he doesn't leave anything. Of it, There's not even a trace of it after he's done with it. So that destruction that God brings upon the systems of the world, um, you know, whether it's the head of gold, the chest of silver, you know, the all of uh, just, you know, the bronze, the iron mixed with clay, you know, all the different zones and spaces and successions of one thing morphing into the next and the next. Well, when that rock that is cut without human hands smashes into it, it pulverizes it to a place where there is nothing left. And and it's just like chaff on a threshing floor just blown away with the wind, where there's no trace of it. Now, we're seeing God pulverizing at this point. We're seeing God smashing things, breaking things. Things are coming apart. Well, let's let's go through a few things that are coming apart. Do you... Trust your mainstream news sources today like you used to as far as sources of news and information? No, unless unless you're completely asleep, you don't trust them anymore. You realize that they're there to put 
um, a certain narrative in your face and to get you to believe a particular way. There are propaganda outlets for a vested interest and a vested um, uh, uh, viewpoint and not to give you news, not but to shape the narrative, to shape the way that you think. So there's one that's completely been destroyed that's not going to come back. Um, there's Sure, there's some people that still hold on, but the vast majority of people have left those spaces. They look for somewhere else to find out what's going on because they know that these are just shills and, and, and um, you know, paid for propaganda outlets that are running out of credibility at a rate because they've, they've burned it. They've been caught. So, so there's one. Do you trust your political leadership? You know, well, that's been exposed because of, you know, in, in certain things being brought up and brought to light, populist movements, um, you know, political candidates like Donald Trump revealing a lot of other people. You know, I mean, I was impressed with the fact that he took the stance of, of going against human trafficking. Why would people be opposed to somebody that wants to end human trafficking? <laughs> you know, that would make that their top stance. But, you know, the system of the world runs on human trafficking. The system of the world runs on modern-day slavery. You know, this is not a new thing, by the way. Um, you know, this is not new stuff. What's happening is God is exposing everything. In the time of the apocalypse, the time of the unveiling, God is exposing everything and revealing it and bringing it to light. <clears throat> um, you know, I was reading recently just in the, the book, of, book of Enoch, and um, which is, you know, and this is way in the B.C. area, um, before Christ... Okay, uh, Enoch chapter 15. I'm just going to read you a little bit because this is fascinating reminders. Um, Enoch chapter 15. And he answered and said to me, and I heard his voice, Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice, and go say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to intercede for them. You should intercede for men, and not men for you. Wherefore have ye left your high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourself with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives, and done like the children of earth, and begotten giants as your sons? <clears throat> and though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourself with the blood of women, and have begotten children with the blood of flesh, and as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood, as those who who die and perish, therefore have I given them wives also, that they might impregnate them and beget children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you, for as for the spiritual ones in the heaven, and in heaven is their dwelling, and now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from the holy watchers <clears throat> is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in the heavens shall, in the heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which are born upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. I'm going to read uh, 16, chapter 16. Two. <clears throat> from the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants, <clears throat> from the souls of those whose flesh the spirits have gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment. Thus shall they destroy until the day of the consummation, the great judgment in which the age shall be consummated over the watchers and the godless, yea, shall be wholly consummated. And now as 
the, as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who are be aforetime in heaven, say to them, You have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones, and these in the hardness of your heart you have made known to the women. And through these mysteries, women and men much evil, women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. Whew. Wow. Okay, so if you want to read it for yourself, you can check the book of Enoch, chapter 15 and chapter 16, because that's what we just went through. All right, <clears throat> so we battle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, Ephesians chapter 6. You want to know where that stuff came from? <clears throat> well, there you go. Um, <clears throat> you want to know where these demons that are floating around on the earth, that are hungry, that are looking for some human vessels to jump in and out of? You want to know where those things come from? Well, where, there you go. You want to know where the um, spiritual principalities that are in places in the second heavens that, that you know, scheme and plot and plan for the destruction of that which is created in the image and the likeness of God. You want to know where that comes from? There you go. You want to know what their eternal reality is? Well, the fact that they have no peace and that they are assured an eternal destruction. Well, there you go. And you, brother and sister in Christ, you, child of the living God, you, one that has been called according to his plan and purpose, well, your reality is not theirs. Your reality is being redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, the pathway being made for you to come boldly before the throne of grace. To you, you know, the fallen angels could not go before God themselves. They had to ask Enoch to go on their behalf. And God even said, you know, that angels should be interceding for men, not men for angels. But they couldn't go because they had fallen. And they've been locked out. There's, they can only go so far and no further. So they've been cast down. And, they've, and so for them, they look at the creation, which has been made in the image and the likeness of God. They look at God's people, and there's hatred towards us. There's hatred towards humanity. God's people are not. They hate humanity because humanity has been made in the image and likeness of God. That's the reason why, too, that the whole goal is to destroy humanity, destroy the genome, get you to, you know, turn your hair pink, you know, pierce yourself here, there, and everywhere, get, just get you to mess yourself up. Why? Because um, they hate you, and so they're going to surround you with that and oppress you with that. Uh, they're gonna, going to come after you. And we feel it. Children of the living God, we feel it. We feel the attacks of the enemy all day long. <clears throat> we feel the, the, the oppression of the enemy all day long. And in that process, too, the enemy has human agents that have chosen to go with, with the enemy, chosen to go to hell with the enemy, sign up for that. And the enemy then says, okay, we're going to give you some resource. We're going to give you some position. We're going to give you some access. We're going to give you a seat at our table on the deck of the Titanic if you will be a human agent to help destroy humanity and the people of the living God. So we're in a cosmic clash here. <clears throat> and in the middle of this clash, first of all, of what they've been doing for the longest time has been behind the scenes. Babylon mystery, Babylon mother of harlots, you know, in you is all the blood of the prophets and the saints. So they, they've, been, they've been killing the people of God throughout. They've been destroying the prophets of the living God throughout. They've been extracting the blood of the innocent and have been living off of that throughout. Now, you know, how that manifests in this fallen world, it's, it's I mean, this has been, um, this has been part and parcel of the human experience. Now, this is, this is reality. This is spiritual reality in 
um, as, as it pertains to our natural human experience here. Now, when we get together, when we pray, here's one thing that happens. When we're praying, we're now moving into um, that which Christ Jesus gave us. See, before the resurrection, we didn't have this power. Before Jesus Christ put death and hell under his feet, we didn't have this power. Before he said, it is finished on the cross, we didn't have this power. Before Pentecost, we didn't have this power. After Pentecost, he, he said, look, wait in Jerusalem until you get the power. And, and the power came upon his people. And what does that power give us? Well, it gives us the power to be a witness. It gives us the power to put to death anything in our life that is, is not God and not of God and not what we want in, in our walk with him. He gives us power. It gives us power to be a witness. He gives us power over evil spirits and unclean spirits and to cast them out, to put them asunder. He gives us power over sickness and, and, and we have power over the enemies of God. We can rebuke them. We can cast them out. We can speak in Jesus' name under the direction of the living God and things happen. We can speak and things change. So do that. Do that. Speak. Speak the words of God. Do the things that God gives you to do. Um, and know that you've, you've been given victory and you've been given the ability to overcome. But you're only going to overcome if you keep your eyes on Christ because that's the only place of our victory. Because outside of that, we're outmatched. Outside of that, outside of Christ, we're outgunned. Outside of Christ, we can do nothing. He said that in his word. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And there's a very practical reason for that. Have you seen what you're up against outside of Christ? You can do nothing against these guys. Apart from him, you can do nothing. Apart from him, you can't fight this with your own human ability. No way. Because the very same angels that we're reading about there in the book of Enoch are here today, people. They didn't die. They didn't die. They're still there. They're still functioning right now. The very same demons that 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 died, that or that or I should say, the very same demons that emerged from the giants, have been wandering the earth throughout. We deal with them today. So in the thousands of years that these guys have been doing their thing, you think they would have learned something? You think they might know something about your pattern, your behavior, your the things that might be important to most people? See, this is the reason why God tells us you got to trust Him. This is the reason that God tells us that you got to be like the wind. John 3, you're the, ch the children of the Spirit, they're like the wind. They go where the Spirit leads them. We flow like the water. There's a reason for that. Because if you try to do it in your own natural ability, in your own natural understanding, you are going to get destroyed. You're going to be destroyed because of the fact that these spiritual beings that are at enmity with humanity, at enmity with life, at enmity with the creation of the living God, have, have thousands of years of experience with human frailty, human decision-making, human choices, human priorities in a fallen world. They're ahead of us in time because space-time is now becoming, uh, even that's being questioned. There's, there's plenty of things out there even right now. Uh, Princeton scientists discussing that how as they discover more that they realize some of the constructs of what we've even used to help understand base reality are not holding up anymore. So space and time are, are but they're ahead of us. <clears throat> these demonic spirits are ahead of, these angelic watcher presences are ahead of, and they use that which is known. The only way that you can navigate through and past and out of their grasp 
is to follow the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. The only way that you make it through this life is to keep a loose touch on it in the first place. If something's got to go, let it go. If something's got to come into your life, let it come into your life. But you flow with God. You listen to God. You listen to the Spirit. You do the things the Father says. You flow with the people that God gives you to flow with. And you fulfill the purpose this day that God gives you for this day. You don't worry about all these other things. Because there's a lot you could be worried about. There's a lot you could be stressed about. But you know what? Um, (laughs) There's a lot of it that is beyond your pay grade and my pay grade. There's a lot of it that's beyond us. There's a lot of it that is that is a larger thing going on. And God will reveal to you the things that you need to know. But also, there's a lot of things that, hey, you know, it's a bigger thing going on. And you don't need to worry about some of this stuff. Sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. Don't worry about tomorrow. For, sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. God wants you to be focused on the things that He gives you to focus on. You know, sometimes there's something very simple that God has for you to do that's right in front of you. Do that. Do that thing that God has for you to do that's right in front of you. Because in the process of doing that, it's going to unlock a lot more. It's going to unlock just a lot of other stuff. And, you know, sometimes we worry and perplex about things that have no bearing and we can't do anything about If you want to do something about the things that are going on around you, God quickens you for it, puts a burden on your heart, pray. You need to do more praying. More praying. Pray. You know, you can pray continually. Whatever comes to your heart and your mind, pray about it. Whatever comes in front of you that God quickens to your heart, pray about it. And, you know, right now, The world that's around us, it's coming apart, and people are not making sense. People are not being logical. People are not, um, they're not thinking clearly. Reality is becoming malleable and fluid, and things are being changed. And so for you and I, keep your eyes on Christ, because He is the bedrock. You know, He is the cornerstone, and anybody that's built on the foundation of Christ, you're going to stand. You're going to stand in a time when everybody else is falling around you. And as much as we want to be there for people, as much as we want to help people, as much as we want to be a blessing to people, also each person makes their own decision. Each person makes their own choice. Each person makes their path and they they live with the consequences of their choices. But we need to follow God for ourselves and trust Him. And sometimes, you know what? There are limitations that we we experience along the way because, yeah, you know, I I would love to see certain things stop, change, end. I would love to see the end of human trafficking today. But, you know, God has a bigger purpose going on. So we continue to petition Him. You know, you can ask God for anything that's on your heart and your mind. But you're also, just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. You know, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You know, you gotta, you got to be willing to surrender to the will of God no matter what the situation is because, you know, you've got your idea, but he sees the big picture. He knows. Even in what we read there in the book of Enoch, when he talked to the angels, he said, yeah, you guys were in heaven, but you don't know everything. You guys were close to some some stuff, but you didn't get everything. You don't know. What did Jesus say? He said, no man knows the day or the hour. So so here's the thing. There's a lot of things that God, in His infinite wisdom, has kept close to His chest. And He's not showing it until His time, when He, the mystery of Christ, is revealed. What do you say to Daniel? Daniel, seal it up. You know, it's not for your time. It's not you go and you rest. But this is for a generation to come. John on the Isle of Patmos. There's certain things that God told. They said, "Don't write that down." The thing that was just you heard. Don't write that down. I think sometimes we're so quick to to tell everything to everybody. Now, there's certain things that God wants you to 
Just wait on Him for when to say certain things, when to do certain things. There are things that God is going to reveal in this time, in this day, in this age, that nobody has ever known. And God will show them. God will reveal them. God will bring them forward because it's the right time. It's His time. Nobody's going to force God's hand. He's going to do things according to His time and His purpose. The cross and the crucifixion and the resurrection, those are all cases in point of God's plan, God's purpose, God's perfect timing, God's way that He did things. And when people, they would have had all their other ideas. Not a single person on the face of the earth would have thought that's the way to do it. Who? Who? Who on the face of the earth would have thought that's the way to do it? Send the, send the Son of God to earth to die on a cross for the sins of humanity. Who? Who? Even one. Even, listen, even John the Baptist. <clears throat> John the Baptist. Who baptized Jesus? Who said he saw the Spirit of God coming down upon him like a dove? Baptized him. Said he must, he must increase, I must decrease. That this is, this is the Son of the living God. This is the Christ. This, he saw that. And even as Jesus' ministry went forward, and it didn't go quite to John's expectations, and John sent his disciples to Jesus to ask him, are you the one we were expecting, or should we be looking for someone else? Even John had his questions. Because God didn't do things the way that people thought in their own mind. Which amazes me that you look back in history <clears throat> at, you know, during that time where everybody knew the context, nobody had to translate from, from Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic to English. Nobody had, everybody knew the culture, everybody knew the prophetic writings, all the all of that, and still they all missed it. And God did what He was going to do. And yet today, everybody seems to know exactly what God's going to do, exactly what means what, exactly who the Antichrist is, exactly who this is. Are you seeing what I'm saying? <clears throat> Isn't it incredible? We have the information in front of us, and yet people don't get it. Listen, God's going to do what He's going to do. And when Jesus came and when He did what He did on the cross, everybody ran away. Everybody left Him. You know, you know the disciple Jesus loved, John, a few women at a distance. That's it. And even them, it was just, that was just, you know, they didn't get it. So now... God is doing what He's going to do. And what He does is not going to be according to the expectations of man, or according to the expectations of religion. It's not going to be on the timing of anybody. Nobody is going to force His hand to do something at any time outside of His perfect timing. Jesus did everything that He did within His perfect timing. And as He went forward in His perfect timing, everything was accomplished. Over 300 prophecies about the life, the birth, the, the resurrection, all of the things about Jesus' life, over 300 prophecies about Him. And He fulfilled them all. Jesus fulfilled them all. <clears throat> so for us, we have to realize that God has everything on His clock, His timing, His way. And for us, the, the, the goal should just be to be in step with Him, to be on track with Him, to keep your eyes on Christ. Remain in I Am. That is part of your spiritual training. My brothers and sisters in Christ, that's all of our training, is to remain in I Am, to remain in that place where you are just flowing with Him. You're present. You flow with Him because you need to in order to maneuver past 
the tricks, the snares, the entanglements of the devil and of his angels and of these demonic spirits that float around on the earth, these hungry spirits that are looking for whom they can devour. The devil walks around like a roaring lion looking for whom he can devour. Don't give him that opportunity. You know, there are, there are ways and means of walking through this life. You know, sometimes we get this comic book version of, of what life should be as a follower of Christ. Listen, there's times where Jesus walked from among them. There's times that Jesus um, hid from them. There's times that Jesus went into a clash with demonic spirits and cast them out. There's times that Jesus walked on water. There's times that Jesus, you know, disappeared. Just, there's no formula. There's no formula. But there is a state of being. There is a principle. There is a way. He is, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So there's a way. And it's not the way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. No, Jesus is the way of life. And Jesus offers that life to us, offers that life to you and to me. And we walk in that life. And in walking in that life and walking in that truth, we do see the fulfillment of the plan and purpose of God. You know, um, you want a fulfilled life. You know, sometimes the reasons that people chase after money and power and wealth and all of those things is because they think that in them they'll find some fulfillment, that they'll find some purpose, that they'll find happiness, that they'll find, and they'll find something for a short-term pop. But what you want is a fulfilled life, and only God can give you that. What you want is eternal purpose, and only God can give you that. What you want, what you want is to be able to come into the reality of who you are, in Christ, and only that can come from God. You might have seen glimpses of it, and shades of it, and shadows of it, and hints of it throughout your life, but only God can give you the manifestation of it. Only God can take David as the shepherd boy in the field and make him the shepherd of Israel. Only God can take Moses from the backside of the desert and make him the leader of the people and bring them out of slavery. He had it in his heart, but God had to be the one to do it through him. And only God can do these things through you. Your place and my place is to yield ourselves to the working of the Spirit of the living God. Let God do his work through you. Yield and surrender to his Lordship and let him do what he does. Instead of you trying to do it, you trying to manage it, you trying to make your own way, you trying to forge and just... No, let God direct. And if you're not sure, wait on the Lord. You know, I think that's something too. We just, we, we just don't wait on the Lord like we need to. You got to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and allow Him... Allow Him... To lead you. What did he say? He said that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not faint. You know, there's, I know, I know there's a lot of you out there right now that you're tired and you're beat up and you've been through. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and let Him renew your strength. Let Him minister to you. Because really, you know, there's, there, there are... Man has no answers. Man has suggestions. He can suggest based on limited information and man-made thinking. But only the Spirit of God and only the quickening of the Spirit of God can help you, can minister to you, <clears throat> can give you what you need and what your soul needs. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. Ah, it's all good. 
It's all good. We love you guys. You know, I want to pray with you guys really quick. <clears throat> Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray, Father, for my brothers and sisters in Christ that are listening this day. Lord, I pray for all of us, Father. I pray that you would bless us, that you'd watch over us, that you'd protect us, that you'd quicken us by your Spirit to walk with you, to listen to your voice, to remain present, to remain in I Am. Let your word remain in us, Lord, so that it can bear much fruit and that your fruit will last. Father, we thank you that you've given us power over all of these powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness and high places and demonic presences. Lord, in Jesus' name, we do bind those things off of our lives, off of our journey. We bind them and every and every human agent that works with them. In Jesus' name, we bind their power, their authority, their ability to negatively impact the lives of your children. Father, instead, Father, we release um, just a full flow of your Holy Spirit in and through our lives. We release, Father God, the blessing of your Spirit upon us, Lord. We release the promises of the living God upon us, Father. We know that you'll take care of every need as we trust you, as we look to you, as we seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, Father. Lord, that all of our needs are taken care of, all of our needs are met. Father, I just pray for those that are sick in their body right now. In Jesus' name, I pray that you would heal them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, be healed. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord God, for those that are tormented by evil spirits. In Jesus' name, we bind those tormenting spirits and we cast them out. And instead, Father, we pray for a hedge and a shield of protection around your people. A hedge and a shield of protection around those that walk with you. In Jesus' name. And Father, we pray, Lord, for a strengthening of your church a strengthening, Father, of your body, a strengthening of those that walk with you, that know you, that are called by your name. Father, be with your people this day. Lord, we love you and we trust you, Father, and we go with you. And we pray, Father, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done. Lord, I pray that dreams would be kindled. I pray, Father God, that imaginations and the thoughts of people's hearts would be in line with your presence, your spirit, your plan and purpose. Father, I pray that you'd quicken people with the things that you have for them to do, the good works you have for them to do in such a time as this. And that in all that they do, Father, I pray that you'd bless them. Bless the work of our hands and the meditations of our hearts as we trust you and look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we love you and we commit all things into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you brothers and sisters, we love you guys. Yeah, let us know how you guys like this uh, Spreaker setup. So you can find uh, podcasts either on the Spreaker channel, just search for Spreaker, search for Faith Mix on Spreaker, uh, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. And if you come to the uh, faithmix.com website, if that's where you're finding this, um, you can always get the podcasts there. I shouldn't say always, but right now, you can get the podcasts there and you can download them directly from the website or you can get them through Spreaker. So the nice thing with this app is that it's very clean and they've taken care of a lot of stuff so it makes it easy for us to publish. So um, yeah, um, we've got different things, streamlining things uh, among everybody, making it simpler and easier for us to get the word out because we need to be able to do that in the time we're coming into. The time that we're coming into, um, we need to be mobile, streamlined, effective, be able to respond to the things that God gives us to do. And so we're all doing that. And so we invite you just to just go for it. Whatever God gives you to do, just go for it. Know that he's um, He's taking care of everything and we get the joy of walking this thing out with him. So <clears throat> yeah, also just drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. You can always say hi to us there. Um, or yeah, you can leave a podcast, you can leave a uh, a comment on the podcast too. We always appreciate hearing from you guys. God bless you all. We love you. Um, keep on keeping on. And um, we'll catch up with you guys again sometime really soon. All right. God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye.